Hi there, this is Matt Filio here to do a new thing. I'm going to call this a Vidi article. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about my experience staying at a yurt and specifically why I didn't do any art at the yurt. So I'm going to take a post originally that I wrote for steamit.com and I'm going to share it with you here and we're going to call this a Vidi article. So this will be my very first video article. Uh, enjoy and let me show you that article from Steemit. My family and I just got back from a weekend camping trip in a yurt. My plan as a professional artist was to write off part of this trip by doing some artwork while staying there. Uh, when I mentioned where I would be staying, many of my friends asked, what's a yurt? I didn't know either until my wife booked us a stay in one about a month ago on Airbnb. A yurt is a cone-shaped tent house, a wooden structure covered with skins or fabric that people in Mongolia used back in the day uh, as they traveled around in their fighting campaigns. Uh, think Genghis Khan. Nowadays, you don't have to be a Mongolian or even a warrior to stay in a yurt. I have three small children, uh, one with special needs who hates camping in a tent. It, it must be too small or confining for them. The yurt was a great way to go for us because the one we stayed in was 20 feet in diameter, plenty enough size for our family. Uh, we made the uh, two and a half hour drive up to Cable, Wisconsin, where the yurt was located in the north woods of Wisconsin. Now on the way, I, I picked up a whistle because this is bear country and you just never know what you might run into. Um, the yurt was in the middle of the American Birkebeiner ski trails, which during the fall season are, are pretty desolate. So it was basically just us in the woods by ourselves. Now there is a parking lot or parking spot available at the base of the hill where the yurt resided. Uh, we had hoped to get there by mid-afternoon, uh, so we'd have time to haul our camping gear, uh, food and bedding up the third mile trail before dark and have supper ready for the kids at the usual time. But you know how these things go. We didn't get there until about 5 p.m. And my son was having some issues that needed to be addressed. Uh, so with a dolly borrowed from my father-in-law, I strapped everything to it and navigated the wheeled pack mule <laughs> up the rugged rocky trail. Part way up, I hit a rock that sent all my gear tumbling to the ground. After securing it again and several short breaths later, <laughs> My family and I finally made it to the top. Now, I love my job as a full-time artist, but it does nothing to help my fitness level. Now that was load one. We got load two and three in the dark. I, I started the fire and got the supper on while my wife brought her remaining supplies up. She, she was smart enough to pre-cook spaghetti and meatballs. So all we had to do was put it in the pot and heat it up, good to go. Now having no electricity and discovering that our propane tanks were empty, we only had small battery powered lanterns to illuminate the yurt, but it was enough. Now your eyes adjust. Now there's nothing better at a cool night during autumn than to have a wood stove and plenty of wood ready to burn. And that is exactly what we had. Several large pieces of dry hardwood were stacked neatly next to the stove, ready to crawl inside the cast iron cave and, and put on a show of dancing flames for our warmth and enjoyment. I'm a city slicker, all right, but I, I played with fire my whole life. So getting the fire going was easy enough, but no, I didn't use any gasoline. Uh, it took about an hour and the yurt was toasty warm. 
And after praying over the kids and tucking them into bed, uh, we had two bunk beds inside with plenty of room. Uh, but we, we soon discovered how hot a yurt could get. Uh, it must have been like 100 degrees inside when cast iron absorbed the heat and radiated out effortlessly into the circular space. But still, I'll take that any day over a freezing cold tent. And that's how it would have felt, you know, with 35 to 40 degree temperatures outside. Now, an interesting thing about the yurt is you can hear everything outside. The, the fabric layer doesn't provide much noise insulation. Um, you can hear the wind howling around you just as if you were in a tent. Uh, as, as acorns drop onto the roof above it, it sounds as if somebody was shooting at it with a pop gun. <laughs> there were windows that you could open up by zipper on the outside, and they're just, just plastic and screen. Now the best part was a skylight with a plastic dome that could be opened up slightly with a crank uh, to let excess heat or smoke out if necessary. As soon as morning came, you could immediately tell just by looking up. Now I, I awoke around dawn and I went outside to kindle up the fire. We weren't allowed to cook inside the yurt. Um, the cooking smells could attract bears and other forest critters. And even though the yurt was pretty sturdy, you know, with uh, thick insulated fabric covering uh, two by four and lattice skeleton, it may not withstand a hungry bear's attempts to get inside. So uh, nearby there are some pieces of birch bark. And even though they and all the kindling around were damp, they caught fire immediately and burned with vigor. Uh, it didn't take long with a good campfire to brew some caribou coffee. Uh, that's my favorite. Uh, cook scrambled eggs in my cast iron frying pan and make some fresh oatmeal in my aluminum cooking pot. Uh, we were able to eat breakfast inside in comfort, you know, at the table sandwich between the two bunk beds. And then uh, after getting some fuel for the day, we went out for a hike. Uh, the trails are very rustic and hard to follow according to the maps. They started off wide and had several narrow split offs that were confusing. Uh, it would have been theoretically possible to get very lost out there and uh, end up in some sort of reality TV show episode where. Uh, the professional outdoorsman shows exactly everything you did wrong in your quest for survival. Uh, somehow we ended right back at the parking lot where there was a warm-up cabin for skiers. Uh, we we tour, toured the inside a bit and then we returned to the hike. Let's see my daughter there and... Uh, beautiful pictures of the outdoors. Uh, I marveled at the beauty of God's creation. Uh, cascading leaves fell down from the canopy above like red and gold snowflakes, uh, glistening through the filtered sunlight. There was a gentle breeze and it was in the high 50s, a uh, perfect autumn day. Uh, occasionally you could hear uh, a hawk you know, calling in the distance. Beautiful, beautiful scenery. We got back in the late afternoon and started supper. Uh, fajitas were on the menu. My wife prepared peppers and onions and beef that we cooked over the fire uh, in aluminum foil pouches. Well, she did pre-cook the beef, so that helped a lot, but uh, it didn't take long over the hot coals. And that's the trick, is to let the fire die down to hot coals and then it's almost like cooking over your Weber charcoal grill. Um, nothing was burnt. It was cooked to perfection. It was absolutely delicious. Um, now you, you can't have a camping trip without s'mores. Uh, so when it was dark, uh, we got out the marshmallows, the graham crackers, the chocolate bars, and peanut butter. And yes, I love chocolate and peanut butter. Uh, when you have it in a s'more, it's about the best thing you can get this side of heaven. 
Um, but all your food and garbage have to be locked up securely in the bear proof metal box. And as big as it was, we just barely fit our stuff in there. Now at nighttime, I decided that it would be better uh, to burn smaller pieces of wood so the stove wouldn't get so piping hot. And during the day, I had split the uh, large quarter size logs into eighths. Um, now, I am not a lumberjack. I am an artist. And so instead of chopping, you know, the logs with massive manly overhead ax strokes like my brother-in-law, uh, bluer than green, would have done, um, I, I placed a hatchet into my soft artist's hands and split them with several precise taps from a hammer. <laughs> and that did the trick. The, the wood stove was much cooler um, that night, uh, but I had to get up every two hours or so and stoke it. Not, not that it mattered anyway. My son asked me regularly, what time is it? About once every 30 minutes um, until he completely fell asleep you know, at 2 a.m. So, uh, morning came really early the following day. Uh, this was our last day there at the yurt. Basically, we had time to cook breakfast and then pack up and go. Um, in the morning, while my wife was packing, my eight-year-old daughter, apparently bored, made a zip line out of the twine I had strung across from the deck rail and tree the night before to hang a lantern from. And she took uh, my blaze orange hoodie um, and then use that to suspend my son's stuffed polar bear and send him down across the ravine. <laughs> ah, the things kids do. Now think of the amazing things your kids can do when they don't have an iPad. <laughs> um, my youngest who had her third birthday in the yurt, and she did. Um, was busy drawing on her magnetic sketch pad. Now, previously, when we asked her how old she was, she said, I can't be three until I eat my cupcake. <laughs> now, is not eating cupcakes a way to keep from getting a year older? I don't know, maybe she's on to something. <laughs> but actually, I uh, thought I might be able to do some drawing on the trip. And so I packed my sketch pad and my pencils with me. But what did I discover? Living off the grid with no electricity does not leave an artist much time to do art. <laughs> now I realize why you didn't see much good artwork back in the ancient cultures until uh, the high civilization of the uh, Greco-Roman Empire. And again, really nothing fantastic in, in the Middle Ages until the Renaissance. I think people were just trying to survive. You know, managing two fires and cooking took most of our time during the trip, and uh, we brought our food in. I mean, we brought our food in, so just think if we had to hunt and fish for it. Nevertheless, it was, uh, it was great to unplug uh, for a couple of days and enjoy nature within the interesting and uh, relatively comfortable lodgings of a yurt. Now, I was uh, toying around with the idea of living in a yurt prior uh, to this trip, and I don't think I'd want to live in a yurt now, uh, but I would definitely like to stay there again, <laughs> only just a little bit longer this time. So uh, have a blessed day, and uh, you know if you like this post, if you like this video article, um, definitely give it a thumbs up, and you can connect with me at mattfilio.com, also on steamit.com. Uh, with the uh, handle Matt Filio, and that's where I post on art and life and other interesting things along those lines. So have a blessed day, and I will keep in touch. Hope you enjoyed this video article.